entrepreneurial haven once a week every week we bring you this incredible show where we create an hour where entrepreneurs can literally just connect with each other share what they're up to share what their experiences are and we have a chat and we just share this situation that we find ourselves in that is called entrepreneurship so that's what we're going to be doing again today. I'm so excited to see my best friends in the whole world from all over the world again here today with us. That's going to they're going to talk about the topic, share with us. You'll get to know them. Remember, if you like what any of my friends are saying, um, all their LinkedIn links are in the description below. So if you go to our YouTube video all you go is go to the description click on the arrow down and you'll be able to see all of their LinkedIn links and literally all you have to do to get a coffee with any of them is go and say hey I saw you on the show can we please grab a coffee that is how you get to make friends and learn from and be with and chat with the most amazing entrepreneurs from all around the world you might want to be paying attention in Although we may be discussing a, a particular topic, they are all professionals in different fields and in different areas. So you'd be killing two birds with one stone. You know, pay attention, figure out who they are, get to meet them. Um, I would say everyone in this space, including Sandra that's just arrived, have all been a vital part of us growing our business. So pay attention and then have fun meeting them. Yeah. Guys, these are the most amazing entrepreneurs from around the world. Peter handpicked all of them. So it's just amazing. Uh, handpicked, not hand reared. There's a difference. <laughs> okay, so ladies and gents, today we are talking about overcoming failure and learning from past mistakes. In other words, the show's about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Peter, do you want to tell us all about that? Not really. <laughs> So um, it is crucial, I think, in entrepreneurship, there are some cru things that are crucial to get right, right? Now, we've spoken about some of them. The one is the people that you surround yourselves with. Like, you need these kinds of people by your side. They're going to be your community. They're going to be your upliftment. They're going to be your access to market. You cannot be an entrepreneur if you refuse to talk to people. I hate to break it to you. That's crucial. Second crucial thing, you have to have a value proposition. You need to understand what you're offering and you need to be able to articulate that to the people that need what you provide. Mm -hmm. But then the third very, very crucial, important thing that is like way up there with all of this is how you deal with failure and how you learn from mistakes. Because generally you'd like to not repeat them. Yeah, so I think if we can, as entrepreneurs, we need to aspire to achieve that kind of mindset. Um, and I'll just share with you guys like some of my thoughts on it, and Peter will probably jump in because he just does. <laughs> and then if you guys, everyone that's here, can also put up your hands if you have something to say on the topic, that would be amazing. For me, if I think of this topic like um, how to deal with failure and learn from mistakes, I think there are some quotes that come up for me. So 
when I started in entrepreneurship 10 years ago, one of the quotes that I had on my wall was, uh, fail fast, fail forward. Another quote was, um, you don't fail, you learn or you succeed. Um, and those have kind of become the mantras that I've built my mindset around. So for me, and then the third thing that I think that that's also very important, that's also a quote that's still up there, is um, when you're uncomfortable, it means you're growing. So those are kind of the three t quotes that have shaped the way that I think about failure and mistakes. Um, I believe that, well, at least like on paper or when I tell other people, I believe, mm -hmm. is that you shouldn't beat yourself up over the small things. You, and you shouldn't beat yourself up over, over failure either. Like, I think if you're in that position where you're like, okay, this has not worked out, um, on it, it literally serves no purpose for you to at that point go, bad Nestine, bad Nestine, bad Nestine, until Nestine doesn't want to get out of bed because it's so horrible. No, but if you can, in that moment, embrace the, this kind of mindset of, okay, this happened, what can we learn from that? What do we want to take from this where that will avoid us repeating that mistake in future? Uh, and that can be so, so valuable. And that's something that Mr. Levy also preaches to me. So I've developed a kind of habit, like when I'm uncomfortable or when things happen to me that I mm. just can't deal with or I hate, like I reach out to Mr. Levy, I reach out to Sandra, I reach out to Somerville. And it's amazing how you know, reaching out to someone mm. like that, they can really support you through this process. And literally without fail, like all of them always remind me like, this sucks, I'll sit with you in the suck. But also, if you're uncomfortable, that means we're growing. And then this is something that you have to go through. You might not like it, but it might just be the best thing that ever happened to you. Literally, Mr. Levy said that to me on Friday, and I wanted to throw him with a frying pan, but at the same time, I was like, okay, 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 I will think about that, Mr. Levy. Yeah, I, you know, I think we should get one of those wristbands that go, what would Levy do? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know. I know it's a bit of a trend at the moment, or it's, it seems to have fallen out of it being trended at the moment with people wearing those wristbands, but I think what would Levy do probably would become quite trendy. Um, and for me personally, I, I think we kind of, we can avoid mistakes if we have knowledge. We have knowledge of what those mistakes are and how to avoid those mistakes, but there are going to be mistakes that we just don't have knowledge about. Mm. So we can't avoid them because we just don't know what they are. We don't know how to avoid them. And I think that that's where the power of a community actually comes in. Because when you've got the power of numbers and people in a community where you build relationships, not only can you avoid the mistakes that you personally know about, but you can avoid the mistakes that you've seen others make in their space and learn from them. And based on the relationship, reach out and go, hey, I, I saw you conquered this. How did you do that? I saw you managed to get this right in your business. How did you do that without creating this mistake? Because that's the one I'm looking to avoid. Um, you know, and I, I think that's the very, that's the number one mistake that people make. Mm -hmm. Is not learning from others. Is they, they jump into entrepreneurship. It's all about me. I can do this. I know what to do. And I'm going to learn every single one of these lessons all by myself and get destroyed in the process. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't surround yourself with people. Good luck. I think also we must remember what makes this show so powerful is that we actually have our authentic, actual entrepreneurs on the show right now, like actual people going through actual stuff. So I think if you guys can share some of those stories, like of failure or mistakes or learnings, like that would be such an empowering moment. I'll start. Okay, so at the moment I'm going through a very Oh, and this is also weird. Like, I want to know if you guys can relate because I think a lot of entrepreneurs are kind of these like overachieving types, right? So I'm like, I'm used to like, if I'm working a job, they give me the job specs. They're like, we expect you to do this, this and this. If you get this like 80% right, we'll be happy. And then I'm like, okay, I'll do 160% and then you'll be very happy. And I love <laughs> that feeling of people being very happy. 
now I'm in entrepreneurship and it's not like we failed. It's like, we wanted to build a multi-million dollar empire in two years and we haven't done that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so it feels, oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. So it feels like failure and there's like, there's a lot. Now, honestly, like it feels like there's a lot of frustrations. So, I mean, when you voice it like that, I guess it sounds like, okay, Misty, maybe you're just being too hard on yourself. Maybe we should talk about that as well. But I'm just curious if any of you guys have like also been in entrepreneurship and it's not like you failed. You know, you haven't fa- like it's not like a taste that you get an F on. I think that's what also makes it so difficult sometimes to bounce back because it's that I kind of feel like at the moment it's just like we're just like cruising along. Like you haven't failed, but you failed. Like do, can you guys like relate to that at all? And let's hand over to Brian. Oh, we had a great conversation the other day, me and Brian. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes, it's me. It's really me. It's not AI. It's it's really me here. So um, yeah, part of the reason why I haven't been here in a while is I've had to sort of step back a little bit and and reevaluate what happened to my business after the first lockdown and going online and everything. And I'll share a little piece I got from a colleague of mine. Um, I can't take credit for this piece of genius, but he said, imagine it like it's like a Jenga tower. Right. And as you start building and building and building, you got to start taking blocks from the bottom and bringing up and and it starts to get wobbly and stuff like that. And um, said sometimes you just have to let it fall. Like there's moments, too, where I'm like, I feel like my business is actually just dissolving in front of me because it's the old version. And I can't try to hold that together while I'm building the next thing. So um there's been a process of that in the last little while and it's painful. It's painful. It's so like, painful. You have it's to like figure out ways. <laughs> yeah. Like you need to side hustle other ways to bring some of that income in and, and just make, make stuff work. Right. And, and I found that, uh, you know, this, this can happen in a lot of different ways, like in relationships and in your inner circle, like the people you're around, like, and I, I would say too, like what has really helped me through this is, is the people around me surrounding yourself with the right people, the people that are on the other side of the, the original matrix you're in, you're trying to move to the other side, people on the other side calling you over, <laughs> spotters, I like to call them, you know, and um, yeah, you just got to really just keep plugging along and you have to weigh in too on like, what is what is the value it's going to have on your life and, and what will you absolutely not stand for and, and, and they'll keep you getting up every day and one thing I realized too is is like just applying my own principles as a holistic coach and Reiki master, fitness expert and stuff like when I move my body, stuff gets done. <laughs> and I went through a period of like almost like letting everything go and I wasn't moving my body that much either. And it was just there was a fear around what was going to happen next when I started moving again. So I'm back in the game now and working on some things and I created some things as well that uh again it was one of those just do it just do it screw it up and make corrections along the way aka my new podcast <laughs> and uh and 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 I, you surprise you get surprised yourself too like you realize wow that was way easier than i thought it would be why was i delaying that right so um i would just say to anybody out there just if you have an idea just take that one first step and see how it feels if that feels good take another step, right? Just hold yourself accountable to it. I call people on board to enroll them as my accountability crew and just like, look, I got to send you a text that I did this thing. <laughs> and just cheer me on. Acknowledge that you got it. <laughs> that's all I need, right? And that's really helped me a lot. So glad to be back here. Um, Brian DeCastro, domestic athlete, holistic coach, helping you get unstuck, gain the access to the life force you need to succeed in your mission. Oh, amazing. Nice. Thank you so much, Brian. And it's so good to have you back to share the stage with you again, my friend. Amazing. I will say for accountability, that is Sandra. She is amazing. If anyone, like if you get like in that rut where you're like, I'm just not, I know I need to do these things, but I don't know if I'm going to do them. Or it looks too big to, to conquer. Oh, she is so amazing. She's like this little like angel, just like every day, just like, you can do it, you can do it. And I'm like, I hate life. I'm not moving. Just, you can do it. That helps so much. Yeah, but she does go from you can do it to 
get this done. Have you done it yet? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Kendrick, let's move over to you. And are you going to show the world your evil genius pose? Like, please just show them. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> well, um, I was going to talk about um, different kinds of mistakes and insidious mistakes that you make because you don't have enough information um, or mistakes that you make because of willfulness and your ego getting in the way. Uh, but uh, as Brian was talking, I was also thinking about, and it's a, it's a Buddhist concept, um, of there not being things like mistakes and failures and right and wrong. And there's only things that you do and the outcomes that happen from the things that you do, action and reaction. And the problem is we get attached to what we think the outcome should be. And then we get very frustrated when our expectation differs from reality. Um, and whether that's positive or negative doesn't matter. It results in a, in a kind of suffering. And therefore, we should do the work that we do uh, and do the actions required and have no attachment to the outcome and just keep on doing them until we get probably going to do a lot of the wrong ways of doing them before we find the right ways of doing them. Um, and just be patient with ourselves and, and not castigate ourselves because, oh, we failed, oh, life is a failure, the business is, oh, it was all a mistake, why did I do this? Uh, I want to go, where is my mommy? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, rather reframe it in a way and, you know, do what, put in the effort and things will happen and you learn things from that and some things will work and some won't and the things that won't work you'll figure out to do other ways of doing it and keep on doing it and some things will work and keep on doing those things if you can i suppose yeah. so that's that's my two cents of little buddhist wizard wisdom there not from any podcast or anything that i'm doing but just there i, I might say Hi. something else later i don't know that is so cool though it's so cool to think like failure is actually a complete like it's a human made up concept like if you just remove the concept from your vocab then you just left with that is such a freeing like thing to think of like you just have stuff that you do and things that happen because of the stuff that you do thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing that that's a really life-changing for me it's going on my wall hendrik you have to remind us who you are so that we can connect with you do you think anybody here don't know who I am at this point, eh? <laughs> One hundred million dollars for the podcast before we ask. Yeah, you can only be bad media. I can do the dance too if you want. Might remind you. Bad media, the podcast people. And for those that are in the know. That is one of the spaces you definitely want to go if you are looking to step into the podcast space. Yeah. Hendrik, I have a very, very exciting opportunity for you as well. I'll be discussing that with you shortly. But um, yeah, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your wisdom. And um, just this show just like picks me up every single week. It's amazing. Mr. Levy, let's hear from the Levy. What would Levy do? I don't think Levy makes mistakes, to be honest. Like, oh, so have you, so have you ever found out anything? so many so many that's why that's where we learn from so i think it's i think yeah you know we all if you said something if you said to achieve something i think feel, there's a difference between feeling like you failed and then just and actually acknowledging that you have failed and i'll explain that so i think if you if you set yourself a goal and you want to achieve it and you haven't be human and you feel like you failed yourself, that you failed. I think it's uh, really what it, we need to have a look at what did we learn? We just didn't achieve the goal. But to say to someone, no, don't feel like a failure. I don't think there's one person in this room that can say that they've been through their life not feeling like a failure. I think it's how long you spend in that space is the, is the key. So I failed, get through the emotion, um but i think through through learning and through my life's journey and yard yeah, i haven't achieved what i wanted to to many times but it's more about what I, and i felt disappointed but there were times where i'd be lying to you if i didn't say i felt like i was master at getting into the boxing ring with myself um 
So, but I learned from that. Um, and I learned through talking to other people and sharing experiences. And sometimes it's always good to, when you feel like you have failed or you feel like you haven't achieved, is to actually, to face it. We need to accept that not, it, so I'm not going to use the word fail, failing because it's not failing. If we, we have to accept that we will make mistakes. There will be, there will be times when we won't achieve what we've set out to. And I'm going to add something in front of that. It just means we haven't achieved it yet. So you haven't, you want to build your multi-billion dollar Forbes 500 company, but yeah. And you're a bit upset that you haven't achieved it. Well, you just haven't achieved it yet. So we haven't met, it hasn't met our expectations and then we feel like failures. But I think it, the only time we'll fail is if we don't learn from it. So if we don't learn from our mistakes, then I think we failed ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to accept our mistakes. We need to accept that mistakes or going through the highs and the lows of life, not just business. It's part of life. Life's not a straight line to the top. Um, you can even, I'm sure you can, you can read, I'll read the, the books, um, the Richard Bransons of the world, uh, the, Elon Musk, all these guys. I think the difference between them and people like ourselves is they accept that those troughs are part of the journey. I don't say they like going there, but they make acceptance of it. Whereas we fight ourselves in it. So I would, I've made, I've made plenty of mistakes. Um, my brother and I, when we, when we first went into the business world, we be careful not to get, don't get caught up in someone else's marketing department. Okay. We did. <laughs> and we, saw these guys that were supposedly so successful. I won't mention the brand, but we were going to take this brand on. They were in Durban. We were going to take it on in Johannesburg. And we were so caught up by how they arrived in Johannesburg, what they looked like, what they, they were great marketing guys. They sold the whole nine yards to us. Uh, we bought in those days, you know, remember the little box sort of shaped BMW? Okay, that was like, sure, if you had one of those, you had arrived. So we hadn't even sold one thing and we each had, we bought one of those each. So we thought we arrived before we even started. And it came, <laughs> we learned very quickly that that's not a good way to start business because we had to give the cars back. So, <laughs> and then we sat with a whole lot of stock that we couldn't sell and we gave it away to our family. So we gave the cars back and it cost us a flipping fortune. So it was an expense. It was an expensive lesson at the time, but a cheap life lesson. Because I don't think I would have been to any school that would have taught me that. And even if I did, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have remembered it because I don't remember much from my studies at school. So, but that one I remember. So, it's those. It's kind of those. Yeah, those hard lessons, you know. And um, I think we can. I don't know if we can avoid mistakes. We can't avoid mistakes. We're going to make mistakes, and we don't know everything. And but we got to try things, and you know, we try our best. You can do as much research as you want. Um, You've got experts sitting here. I had a wonderful chat with uh, with um, Hendrik Beard this afternoon. Um, I know Zip about podcasting. I learned a lot. Will I go on that journey? Yes. Will it be, well, the first time I'd be what I wanted? I don't know, but I've got to try. I'll only discover that. But speaking to Hendrik, because he's the expert, it can highly reduce um, me making those mistakes, the risk of making mistakes is not going to stop me. But, and I say that with the utmost respect because he's actually a specialist in what he does. And listening to Hendrik will highly increase the chances of me getting to where I want. But I've still got to go on that journey. So I think it's, it's important. And then 
I must tell you something. There was this afternoon I was on a, a Zoom session with some of the candidates from who are doing this entrepreneurs course that you guys have. So they're feeling stuck. So we hopped on a session. The one guy, I need to tell you what they were talking, all feeling a bit stuck. And we spoke about not trying to be a perfectionist. Because it was asked, what are the expectations of my week in this course? It says expectations, you come out of here with a context that your expectation is that you're going to walk out of here with a final product. And I said, and that's not, you're setting yourself up for failure. Okay. Because there's no side, because the one person said they'd like to, you know, they strive for perfection. And I asked, do you, do you think perfection exists? And they said, no. I said, well, then you, you try, you're chasing something that doesn't exist. You will be disappointed. You will not, you can't achieve something that doesn't exist. I know in the context with which it said, it's, we, we just use it, you know, I want to perfect it, but it can lead you, lead to procrastination. So yeah, I think we need to learn on those journeys. Like Brian said, like Henrik said, it's, it's right through the troughs. And I think I've learned to do that. And I've learned that through the mistakes that I've made, decisions I've made that I thought were the right decisions at the time. Um, my late dad told me there's there's not a good there's not a right or wrong decision. It's either a good or a bad one, because at the time when you made it, you thought it was right, or you thought it was the best decision. But you'll only find out when you start the journey. So, the one guy in the soft session, he said we must also learn to listen, because if you're talking a lot about what you you then you're speaking. If you speak if you're speaking a lot, you're speaking already about what you already know. And that was quite profound. It was quite awesome. So, yeah, I think, yes, mistakes made. The one big one in, in business, I've made mistakes in um, partnerships uh, that didn't go right. Not that the partner was bad. We just didn't, we didn't spend enough time finding out what we each want. Um, and if we're on the same page and we, when we weren't. But it wasn't his fault or my fault. We just didn't do it. But what did we learn from it? Next time you're going, if you go into a partnership, look into it. So, yeah. yeah. And I think this space provides that, especially for all the entrepreneurs, most of them are solopreneurs, um, is to speak, ask, ask, because we don't know everything. So that's one thing I've learned is ask, accept your mistakes, when you acknowledge, when you see it, pat yourself on the back for recognizing it, and then do something about it. Mm. I would, I would pat myself on the back, but there's this one itchy spot I just can't reach. <laughs> so, Miss Dean, if you wouldn't mind, just you, <laughs> you see, Pete, just ask, ask for help. Here we go. <laughs> You're learning already. <laughs> I think it's so special that you shared that story, Mr. Levy. Um, it, it just it makes me feel so much better about some of the mistakes that I've made. So I just thank you for being willing to share that with us. Mm. Uh, yeah. th then again, then again, I think that if we look at entrepreneurs, um, you show me an entrepreneur that hasn't made mistakes, and I'll tell you right now, he's not an entrepreneur. But it's also because entrepreneurship is so not well defined. Krista, let's bring you into the conversation. All right. I wanted to talk about failure in kind of a similar way than, than you guys have been uh, talking about it. And I, I think that to me, I don't generally use the word failure unless I've stopped trying, unless I've given up on something. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I can say I haven't succeeded yet. So I, I agree with what Stephen was saying on that. And is it okay if I share a story about how a failure story that that's about how I became an unintentional entrepreneur, how I, I turned the failure into something I could use. That would be amazing. Yeah. Okay, great. I am an unintentional entrepreneur. I never anticipated that I was going to start a business. It was not my intention. I, so I worked for different places. I worked for a nonprofit doing PR. 
I work with some local newspapers, a hospitality industry trade journal, but there were transition points in my life where I needed to find a job when something happened where the, the newspaper got bought out or the the uh, PR, the, the nonprofit eliminated my position entirely and didn't replace me. So th these different things result in transitions. And at one point during a transitional time in my life, I was, I felt really low and really empty. My phone wasn't ringing. And when it did, sometimes they would want me to wear all these hats and, and be this person that I wasn't. They would ask questions like, do you know graphic design? Uh, no, I don't think you want me doing your graphics. Of course, I wasn't sharing at that time that I am blind and that I can't see to do the graphic design. Do you know HTML? Well, I know a little, but not enough to use it at my job. Yeah. So th these different things happened. What ended up ultimately the decision that I made and the choice that I needed to make over and over and over again was I can either stay home, go nowhere, do nothing, and just get more and more depressed. And at that point, I had kind of hit rock bottom in a sense. I, I knew I wasn't going anywhere. Nothing was happening. Or I could go out there, go somewhere, do something with my life, meet people, and see what I could make of it. That's how it came about that I got clients locally. I had been doing some very low-priced online stuff, but that's not really a business either because you can't live on that. Because at that time, the online stuff was just kind of you know, the low hanging fruit, just, okay, I can get this. I can get my portfolio going even more than, than what I did at my jobs. And that's where it, that's what happened that over time, as I gr grew more and more confident in my own strengths, as opposed to the strengths that the hiring managers wanted, I found that the, my real strengths, the strengths that I have are the strengths that people want when they hire someone to do projects with them. And that those strengths, being a good writer, being a good storyteller, helping them to, it can help them to catapult their business. So I turned this failed job search into a business. And as I go, I'm finding more success in my business. And even if for some reason I decided, you know, I'm going to close up shop, this isn't working for me anymore, I'm going to close my business and go do something else, you could say that it was a failed business or you could say, you know, I, I, could, ref I could refer to it as a stepping stone in along my path or a very modest success or other words that don't necessarily mean that I failed. Uh, I I really like that. That's amazing. I really Krista. like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I think that um, for me personally, uh, you know, when you get somebody that's been a jack of all trades but master of none, and you're trying to figure out why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And I and being in spaces where you're not too sure that the things that you're learning are actually go are actually the things that are positioning you for the things that you're going to do in the future. And if mm. I look back at all the things that I've done, I kind of think to myself, oh, that's why I learned that lesson. That's why I did that. And it may have seemed yeah. like, a, like a failed space, but in essence, if I didn't learn that lesson or if I didn't uh, learn that skill in that space and think to myself, I'll never use that. Um, but I look at my space now, I'm using all of it. Um, so... Do we look at it as failures or do we look at it as, like Krista said, just stepping stones to where you currently are? Yeah, yeah even Chris when we change our niches, do we look at the change in niche as a failure? Or do, I look, do we look at our previous niches as, well, here's the success I had here. Let me build on that success to create even more success. So for example, I was building on working with web designers and graphic designers and folks like that to do web content. And that was the bulk of my business. What I realized though, was that I can build referral partners that partnerships that are a lot more valuable 
when I look to more strategy that goes beyond the one-off website and goes to how can we do the book and the blog and the bio and the website or some combination of those that is strategic for the client. And ultimately it's not about any of those deliverables. It's about the, it's about how well the material that we're working, that we're building builds trust, boosts credibility, helps the, the client, the end client, their clients feel more comfortable taking action with them or helps the client to get more booking, speaking engagements booked. So it's not about the, and that's also a lesson, a tough lesson that I had to learn that it isn't about my products. It's not about how many bios or how many blogs or how many books it's about how am I positioning my clients for their own success? Love that. I think I it's that. so valuable just to listen to that story and to be reminded of, it's, it's a complete, like, I don't know where in my entrepreneurial journey I went from, you know, because in the beginning, like, you get into entrepreneurship, it's so exciting, you're so passionate, you're like, oh, let's take this hairy, big, audacious goal, it's going to be amazing, and you start counting those small wins, and you're exploring, and everything's fun. I don't know where, somewhere along the line, I guess I switched mindset at some point, and now it's more like, but this is what we want. We don't have that yet. And I'm focusing on everything that we don't have. Where if I just like, it was like, it's so special for me to hear this story, Krista, because I think like what I need to do is work on getting back into that beginner entrepreneur mindset where you're curious about everything. You're counting all the small wins. You know, you're just learning so much. And instead of saying like, well, we wanted to be Mark Zuckerberg in two years. We haven't done that. We failed. You start mm -hmm. saying, well, you know, we met 80 people from around the world that we're now permanent friends with. And like currently, like some of them have shown up on the show. And I mean, how amazing is that? We didn't mm -hmm. have that before. We didn't have that before. Thank you so much for sharing that, Krista. Just remind us who Thanks you are having. and where you're from. And then Mr. Levy also needs to do that. Yeah, I'm Krista Janik. My business, Wise Words That Matter, all about ghostwriting, blogging building trust, boosting credibility for speakers and thought leaders and other types of people who are passionate about what they do. Um, yeah, I'm from Long Island, New York, by the way. And so exciting to be able to network from with people from all over the world. Thank you so much for adding your voice today. How very, very special. And Mr. Levy, just remind us who you are and where you're from. I'm from uh, Cape Town in South Africa. My practice is Dare to Be, Coaching and Beyond, and I work with leaders who are intentionally committed to creating a space where those that they lead respect each other and their differences. Oof. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Levy. That's why we need a permanent Levy in between me and Peter, <laughs> just by the way. And let's say, Chad, let's move to you. Let's get you in on this conversation. All right. Um, there's been so much... Um, wisdom shared from the you know from only a few people one can stretch the wisdom from cape to cairo or even past that um, and Estine, you started this with uh, with a quote so i'm going to do that as well um wayne dyer says or dr wayne dyer says if you change the way you look at things the things you look at change and then I, I, I want to go back as well and just ask, as we were asking now, who has never made a mistake in their entrepreneurial journey? Um, I look at myself, how did I learn how to ride a bicycle? I mean, that's very basic. But how did I get to learn how to ride a bicycle? It was through falling, scratching my knees and all that until I could get it right. Um, how did we learn to drive a car or a motorbike for Pira? Um, how did we learn to cook? <laughs> how, so all these little things that we don't look at, um, that we think, ah, it's natural. I mean, take a baby, for instance. When they learn how to walk, they fall so many times, but they get up and do it again because it is their goal okay it is what they want to achieve 
I also wanted to learn how to ride a bike and be able to spin it like my friend. So I had to fall several times. I did it. Um, so it's, it's all those mistakes that we make that will teach you um, how to, to, to approach things going forward. Um, we, we, we address what you failed at. We, we address the cause of failure. Say, oh, I made a mistake here. So for me to overcome this obstacle, I've got, I, I don't have to do this again. I mean, look at, look at um, Brian, you're a sports person, rugby. You know, you are on your way to, to, to score a try. And suddenly somebody just comes and tackles you. Do you give up rugby and say, mm, I couldn't score that try that was so important, so I'm giving up on rugby? You don't. You go and do it again and again and again until you score that try. Because that try for you is important. So as entrepreneurs, we cannot say, and as Krista put it, we cannot say just because we failed, we're giving up. We've got to carry on it's 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 your it's your learning steps it's your stepping stones failures as you are, are your stepping stones because if you don't have stepping stones then you are in your comfort zone mr levy it means you're not developing you're not growing so for us to grow we need to have those obstacles we need to find those uh glitches we we need to overcome them and have you ever imagined how how you feel when you are at the top or at the summit of your challenges and like you look down and say ah oh, did i come that far it's 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 so amazing it's so satisfying so for me it's the very simple basics that we need to also think about as we were growing up before we became entrepreneurs to say this is what I've achieved after overcoming the errors, the mistakes, the challenges that I, that I, that I encountered on my way. And Nestine, I'm going to end on a quote again. Um, Dennis Waitley, we've got to have a dream. If we are going to make our dream come true. This is Lesecha Moko, just call me a business development agent. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Masecha, um, one of the mistakes that I made when my firstborn son decided that he was going to try and learn to stand up on his own two feet and actually walk was I found a wooden table and I cut the legs off the table to make it nice and short so that he could have something to grab onto that he could then learn to walk around. And because the table was round, yes, he did learn to stand on his own two feet and he mm. did learn to walk. But the mistake I made was teaching him to walk in a circle. So yes. when he did actually yes. manage to start walking, he actually walked in circles <laughs> and not, <laughs> not straight. And, and Pira, cutting the table to make it shorter for him, you're limiting his growth. <laughs> and that, that limiting cost him now to yes i'll be able to grab and then he walks in circles because you you limited his growth you limited his his thinking to say i need to grab on this leg until i can reach the top so you say okay let me make it easy for you now in entrepreneurship who makes it easy for us we've got to go we've got to learn we've got to fall we've got to keep on grabbing and going up until we are there and i think we are never there actually because you achieve this and then you're like hmm i want to have this and then you go and grow again and then you're like, I, I think i think we never reach a point where we are happy to say um we have achieved what we wanted and we can relax i mean esteem you want how many people as um 500. After reaching 500, you'll say, mm, we reached 500, so let's make it a thousand. And that's entrepreneurship. 
Ja, het leest wel naar uitgevoerd. Uh, Absoluut. Do you think Paul Protect Forbes 1000 list? There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Lissetia. That's so special. Yeah, you reminded me that, like, actually, I think it's a thought pattern for me because when I was learning to drive a bike and a car, I remember, like, especially with learning to drive a car, like, it's been like I go through these stages and I'm like, just before I succeed, I'm like, this is impossible. Like, everyone else in the world is going to be able to drive a car and I will never, ever be able to drive a car. Like, I literally get to that stage. And now you made me think maybe entrepreneurship is not impossible for me. Maybe it's just like the world's most complicated bike. <laughs> well, uh, th then again, for those in the know, I have happened to hear a story from your father's perspective of what his experience was like when he was in the car when you were learning how to drive. And now it's kind of like you're in the entrepreneurial car with me. Are you okay? Guys, Peter needs therapy. I need therapy. <laughs> Sandra, let's hear from you, my friend. As somebody that has a 15-year-old that is learning how to drive, yes, it is definitely scary. And she's a fifth kid, so it's not like I'm not new to this perspective, but they have all been extremely different, um, very different. And even today, I was just like, you got to remember, you're defense driving. You're not offense. <laughs> you're defense driving. Like, I don't know, the last couple of days, people have been driving super crazy. So I'm like, defense driving. Sure enough, somebody cut her off like two seconds later. I was like, good job. Like, she was paying attention, thankfully. Um, but, you know, she's also 15, and she does not like to be corrected as she's driving. I'm like, driving is a privilege, not a right. And she just definitely does not like that. Um, so I'm not big on failures. I'm big on lessons. Like I really do not like the word. That's an F word in our house. You did not fail. You learned a lesson. Some lessons you have to learn more than once. Me, 5,000 times sometimes. Um, and lessons definitely can present themselves in different ways in different seasons. So if your perspective is one way, like you said, Nestine, the lesson's going to be this way. If it's your perspective is this way, it's going to be this way. So that's a lot of times why I am very big on reviewing your goals to learn the lessons. But the flip side of that is celebrate the wins. I think people forget about the wins. The small wins count just as much as the big wins. The 500 count just as much as the 80 people count. The fact that you made it to Friday after a crazy 60-hour entrepreneurship week is a win. Like, you're still standing, you're still breathing. As Brian can tell you, those are very important. <laughs> you know, and I think that I'm very big on celebrating the wins and on a weekly basis because entrepreneurship is hard. Like I don't, I get frustrated when people are like foo fooing it and da 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 da. That's just not the truth. Um, and I'm going to end on a quote um, since everybody else is doing quotes today um, a Jim Brown quote. So the three C's of life are choices chances and change. You must make a choice to take a chance for your life to change. And I know when I joined Explore ProTech, that was definitely something that has been life-changing for me. I'm Sandra, your Get It Done coach from Michigan, and I will help you reach your goals by getting things done. Thank you so much, Sandra. And I just have to say, I'm going to celebrate a massive win because if someone goes on live YouTube and tells you like, joining your platform has been life-changing for them then like that can't be <laughs> that can't be a failure like no, that is so freaking it. special and I was just I always so just want to tell you guys like while I'm like looking at all your beautiful faces including Hendrix Lamb like I can't keep my eyes off it <laughs> like this is just so special like how special is this you know, just seeing all of you on here, like actual entrepreneurs, actual awesome, incredible human beings, and we're all just sharing to help each other and to help the world. Like, that is so freaking special. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for that. Anyway, before I go off on a tangent, Joanne, let's bring you in on the conversation. Um, well, I mean, everything that's been said is, is so true. Um, I think as entrepreneurs, uh, we're so invested in our business because it's often such a big part of who we are that that's why it's easy for us to 
feel like we fail if something goes wrong because we're so invested in what we're doing. Um, and it's really looking at that as opportunities to, you know, to grow from what doesn't work and find out what does work and reinforce that and get to your goal quicker. Um, but trying not to internalize everything so much, trying to separate our business from who we are, which is hard to do as an entrepreneur, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and a, what I find a lot of good ways to, um, you know, to look if something goes wrong, um, to really look into it, you know, was it a communication issue? Um, maybe you were the wrong solution for the client or they weren't your, um, your target audience. Um, maybe it was just the wrong time. You know, it's not necessarily something that's done wrong. It's just, there might be an external factor that came into play. Oh, definitely. Um, something that you said that really rings true for me is that, um, you find the things that work and reinforce them, you know, and obviously to find the things that work, you need to find the things that don't work, which are not necessarily the mistakes. They're just part of the process of finding the things that actually work. And then to realize that the things that actually work because your business is this evolving thing will not work forever Yeah. because the space changes and people change and dynamics change and everything changes. And the things that used to work now get to a point where they might, not work and then you've got to go through the process all over again of finding the things that do work eliminating the things that don't but in order to go through that process again going through the process of finding things that don't work not necessarily mistakes they're just well that doesn't work yeah you know, it's, it's, and so I it's have, just like yeah. process of you constantly going through it yeah and i did find a really good graphic that shows um very typical day in the life of an entrepreneur and I'll, I'll hold it up. Um, oh yes. Yeah. It's very much up and down, but it's well worth it. So it says, um, I'm excited. And then, ugh, this is hard. Then it's working. And then I messed up. <laughs> Give up the good for the great. And then I think I'm going bankrupt. And then it goes to, <laughs> I'm good and don't know, I don't know why I get down on myself so much. And then it goes to, I was wrong. I suck. <laughs> and then it goes, wait a second. My life is great. And it, it's very true. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. Guys, entrepreneurship are for people that like are very emotionally resilient. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think let's, let's help people at least avoid the, the, the biggest mistake we've ever come across, which is, thinking you can do it on your own. Mm. Um, and I think that this is what this space is all about. Well, are we going to make mistakes in this space? Oh, of course we're going to make mistakes. But we can actually learn from each other, especially if we're building relationships where we know who everybody is in this space. We know what they're good at. We know that what they specialize in. And in order to avoid certain mistakes, we can strategically go to certain people as we're on our journey going, well, this is the next part of our journey. We're stepping into this. This is what you specialize in. What do you think? Much the same as Stephen Levy went to Hendrick and was like, hey, this is the next part of my journey. And I know that this is what you actually do. So in order for me to avoid some mistakes, can we have a conversation? And then you can um, give me information that can just reinforce that, okay, so this is the way it's done and then give the space for those mistakes to happen and learn and build and but avoid the major mistakes because you're learning from somebody that's done it before and i, I think that that's what this space is all about and that's the reason yeah. we pull this yeah. space together so that now members of the audience the people that are out there watching can take a look at who's in this space you know stephen levy from a from a leadership perspective and sandra from an accountability perspective um, Brian from um, from a um, health and wellness and well-being perspective, um, Krista from a writing perspective, um, Hendrik in the podcasting space, Joanne 
you've got to buy the book. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to buy the book. Get the book. But if you get Joanne's book, you also need to get Hendrik's book. So. The censure in, and his understanding of business. Um, you, these are the people you should actually be talking to because these are the people that we come to for us, for, for us to